Chris, thank you very much for nice coming. See the famous Dr. Shade. I love it. It's amazing <laughs> that you're in London as well. Thank you for supporting us in year one. It's incredible. Oh, right. I love it. You've got a lot of fans here. I think you don't realise how many fans you actually have in, it, in England. Yeah, no, I've certainly seen a lot. And there was one guy who met me after the talk and we were just trying to walk over the booth where Shabir is and, you know, five, ten people stopped me on the way and he goes, is it always like this? I, I talk about Quicksilver a lot. Uh, I mean, it's like since the Andy Cutler stuff that was yeah. outdated and whatnot, yeah. God rest his soul, um, the, the whole um, liposomal and um, I guess not just working on the blood system for mercury detoxification specifically is, is where I got into it. I, and I really appreciate like the push catch uh, system and I talk about it quite a lot because mm -hmm. mercury or like dental issues mm -hmm. is part of the journey of why we came here today so um anyway i'll move on so uh, how would you define your your what you do specifically within health for the for the listener yeah you know so it's always hard to come up with you know what's your elevator pitch mm -hmm. you know and uh, and uh, so i'll always start with uh i make high-tech dietary supplements and then people say hmm. well, what are those and I say, well i make these little lipid nanoparticles <laughs> of different nutraceuticals that you put them in your mouth you get this super high uptake but that's just sort of our vehicle is mm. what's our bioavailability you know how do we get stuff in there rapidly high mm. amounts so it's really having a profound effect and then the real task is how do you stack them together to achieve different goals? Mm. So you know me originally from detoxification protocols. So I'm gonna stack together things that upregulate bioflow, upregulate NRF2 so that we, or, and bringing glutathione with that so that we can turn on all the chemistry for detoxification. Mm. Now here, I'm talking more about AMPK and keto. How do we hit the targets that keto hits to turn up movement of fats, movement of fat soluble toxins? Or how do I uh, put sirtuin activators with NAD to get longevity mm -hmm. uh, aspects? So we're stacking things together uh, in products and then stacking products together into protocols mm -hmm. to achieve different goals. But we're using this central tool of liposomes and nano emulsions mm -hmm. to drive bioavailability to mm -hmm. a level we haven't had before in dietary supplements. And then all of a sudden that does things like mm -hmm. keto before six, put into ketosis in an hour and a half. Mm. It's too good to be true. Like, what? how does it do that? Mm. That's the bioavailability difference. Mm. It's interesting because um, um, Martin Tobias, um, CEO of Upgrade Labs, was saying that he was in era one. And yeah. he was saying that when you go in, they you test you for keto, uh, keto yeah. levels and then have some of your um, keto, new keto product and then test the levels again. Yeah. And he was like, and I was like, really, there's a product they can do that? He goes, well, they're testing it. It's quantified, dude. Like, yeah, this I know. is amazing. We show up at the store, mm. at a show. I mean, we did this all during the Upgrade XP. Mm. You know, just come on up. We'll show you it works. Mm. <laughs> Here's your blood ketones now. Take it. There mm. they are later. Mm. That's the beauty of biohacking, in my opinion. It's kind of like, you know, well, it's the quantified side. Yeah. It's like you can't push against the data. And even if it's one, N equals one times a thousand, I mean, yeah. it's pretty good data. It's better than the averages that you use in a lot of testing at the yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. And then, N equals one means that you're going in and trying to find your unique algorithm, mm. your unique combination of things, mm. and you're not as worried about other people's tests. But you put these all together, and you see, mm. yeah, these supplements do this. They'll mm. shift the needle that way. Uh, and it's just, the, you know, and some people, they'll be the outliers, they'll go the other direction. Mm. But in general, we're seeing what these supplements do. And, mm. and the more we make them highly bioavailable, the more radical they are and predictable in what they're gonna do for people. So that's, that's perfect, takes me on to the next question. It's like, how do you think that what you do specifically fits into the health optimization mindset. Now for us, it's obvious, but I mean, but more bioavailable supplements is like, what does that actually do for us, do you think? And yeah, I mean, you, you take the Keto Before Six products. So mm. you've got berberine, you've got resveratrol, mm. quercetin, uh, silymarin. These are things that people take. I remember Mark mm. Houston, the cardiologist, looking at it and going, I take all this stuff, but none of this mm. puts me into ketosis in an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. So with those delivery systems, with the lipid nanoparticles, you focus all of your absorption into a short period of time. So you get a much higher peak in the blood mm -hmm. and you get a total absorption that's higher. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these things like berberine and, and uh, resveratrol are absorbing over hours and hours in a capsule. Mm -hmm. Now we focus that all in a half hour. 
So boom. Mm. But then, depending on the supplement, it's three to tenfold higher bioavailability. You get into mm. curcumin, it's 310 fold higher absorption. Right, now all of a sudden, we're getting the blood levels that are cited in the studies where they start really changing cellular dynamics. Mm. These micromolar levels aren't things that you get from capsules. Mm. And there's one other aspect of it, is they're not metabolized. Mm. So you know, the studies on mice or on, cell, or on cell cultures, often they'll inject or they'll give the cell culture the compound and it hasn't been metabolized. In your GI tract, when you absorb a lot of these things, you start the first phases of detoxification as you absorb them. So you don't have raw resveratrol, you have resveratrol glucuronide or curcumin glucuronide. Mm -hmm. So in these nanoparticles, you get a lot of the unmetabolized compound, mm -hmm. which is much more potent than the metabolite, yep. and you focus that big mm -hmm. high dose. All of a sudden, these are major metabolic shifters mm -hmm. where I can put you into a totally different state in 30 mm -hmm. minutes. Yeah. The other stuff doesn't do that. So mm -hmm. you want to biohack? Here are the yeah. tools you need to shift the diet. I, do you know what? I couldn't agree more. Uh, like, that's quite complicated for people that don't necessarily follow your work or use your products. Uh, like One thing actually is um, a friend of mine um, said, have you tried Histaid? Histaid, is it? I think Histaid. And, and, yeah. I, and I'm uh, since upping my methylation and adding in AC and alpha lipoic acid in, thanks to Dr. Ted and Dr. Scott Sher. Thank you. Um, I started having a histamine um, issue. So whenever yeah. I eat avocado, my nose starts blocking up, yeah. and I wake up with a headache the next day. So I know when I start waking up with a headache, three pumps of Histaid, like yeah. literally 15, 20 minutes, it's gone. It's incredible, and the nose stuffiness is gone, and it's like. So that's it. I'm, I can see compared to other crap. Yeah, because it's... quercetin, luteolin, these are things that have horrible bioavailability. People mm. take grams of them to slowly kind of tone mm. down their, their histamine production. Mm. But you do them in the nano form, boom, yeah. it's yeah. in, and it's in uh, a level in the blood that you just don't get from those capsules. Mm. And all of a sudden, it's able to do the job. Yeah. I mean, I 100% I agree. Like, yeah. It's probably one of my favorite of all time. For right now, yeah. because, just because of the histamine issues. And it's yeah. been, it made me realize, actually, I've had a histamine issue longer than I thought. And right. this stuff is a great fit. Like, fix. And that clarity that comes when you yeah. hit that. If you yeah. do histamine and the CBD together, mm -hmm. the CBD is controlling the inflammation in the brain that had happened as a result of the histamines. And, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's like you could just, boom, I'm just going to shift this. Mm. Yeah, at the VIP dinner last night, I had uh, avocado and uh, raw cacao mousse. Yeah. And I woke up at four o'clock this morning after not much sleep, bearing yeah. in mind what I'm like now with a migraine yeah. and stuffy nose. I was like, oh my God, uh, I grabbed the histate. And I'm, it's not an advert, this is absolutely 100% true. Yeah. Like three pumps, I know it says two, but three, whatever. Yeah. And, um, and I went back to sleep and woke up absolutely fine. So, yeah. I mean, it's like, and it, shows, it shows that this stuff works yeah. it's not just another thing to sell more supplements it really does work so so that's really really cool so I mean what would you say like out of your your journey coming to today what would you say was the the biggest story or the best story that you've heard in terms of what you've done for someone with their health and I know that's broad and a big thing uh, yeah it's broad you know it's funny I, I, I say MDs only tell you their successes and PhDs only tell you their failures or only focus on them and as a PhD I, like I, I don't always keep all this stuff in my head but it's it's got to be you know the most uh, I mean, you'll hear a lot, but the most fulfilling, you know, the real tear jerkers are the autism stories. Mm -hmm. You know, when in a couple of weeks, you got a kid who doesn't see forward in time, doesn't remember backward in time, mm -hmm. doesn't know how to relate himself to other people, suddenly become self-aware, be predictive, use humor, start changing his classes over the period of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, those are beautiful things, you know. They, it, you know, mom sends you a video of him riding his bike, which he had for four years, which all of a sudden, you know, mm -hmm. he learns how to ride in 30, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Just because you calm the neuroinflammation, start the glands communicating again, the mm -hmm. adrenals and the brain start working together again, and all of a sudden this kid reboots. Mm -hmm. uh, so those, those, those are usually the most beautiful stories, mm -hmm. but there's so many people who said, oh God, I got my life back, I got mm -hmm. out from under this, whether it was mercury or yeah. just neuroinflammation, complex uh, toxemias, mm -hmm. 
it, it, it just keeps you working mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah, with Quicksilver stuff specifically, I mean, this is, I mean, it, it must be amazing to see how much of an impact it's having. Because, like, for me, I recommend IMD to people, yeah. uh, especially when they've got bloating or stuff yeah. in with their gut. They go, oh, I've got rid of my metal fillings and I've tried Andy cut the protocol. And it's yeah. like, it's all right, first of all, you start with IMD, clean that, first yeah. of all. Like, just do, go to town with that. It makes a, a big, big difference. And then several people have come to me with mercury toxicity. They've tried collation for ages and ages. Yeah. And I go, push catch, just try it. Like, yeah. trust me, do that. Get your head down. Sure, there's going to be a bit of detox. Get your head down. Get on with it. Don't be too yeah. moody with people in the outside world. Yeah. And see me in six weeks time. Yeah. And they're like, oh my God, I can't believe it. My brain fog's gone and yeah. everything like that. So it might like, and that's on a tiny little small scale yeah. in the UK compared to like the whole brand. So it's really, like really awesome what you're yeah. doing. Yeah, uh, it's been fantastic. So, um, so I've got um, a couple of specific, more specific yep. questions, but I mean, I'm going to go down the, men uh, the mental, the dental route, um, because that's what a lot of people know me for specifically, and it's yeah. what got me into this space. But I mean, I think conventional dentistry doesn't seem to have adopted intercellular detox or removal of amalgam fillings even. And I know it's a controver very controversial mm -hmm. area. I know we've got some speakers here around it, but I mean, do you think that they will adopt it? And if so, do you think that, like, how long is it going to take for them to realize that this shit is bad for you? It's interesting, you know, that whole development of, of that wing of holistic dentistry uh, was very sort of radicalized against mm -hmm. mainstream dentistry. And they're like, Ch -ch 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 -ch. and, uh, you know, the. American Dental Association was so integral in making Amalgam what it was, they owned patents around it, it wasn't something that they could just turn around and say, yeah, this is bad, let's get rid of it now. Mm -hmm. And so it was like those two groups were really at war. And then I, I perceived that there was a point at which it was okay to start talking to the mainstream guys. Mm -hmm. And we actually went to a mainstream American Dental Association mm -hmm. uh, meeting, and the way to talk to them was not you're poisoning your patients. What doctor wants to hear that? Mm -hmm. You know, that shuts you down immediately. Yeah, yeah. You have to say, look, you are being way too exposed to mercury vapor, you know, and you mm -hmm. even couch it a little bit. You say, look, the, your patients are only have that big exposure when you put them in and take it out, and then it's low after that. Mm -hmm. But you, you're standing here inhaling it all. That can't be good. That mm -hmm. is chronic mercury exposure. And they're like, yeah, mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, kind of like the movement away from dental amalgams is really because composites are white and mm. dental yeah, and yeah. amalgams are gray. Yeah. The movement to having mainstream doctors recognize that there's a problem with mercury is mm. by recognizing it in themselves. Mm. And that process has begun. The fact that I was able to get there and not have tomatoes thrown at me and and uh, and really that shift was away from how it used to be with mm. you're killing your patients yeah. too. You have to be careful with yourself. And once they make that shift in themselves and they take care of themselves and they see the difference, then they'll recognize, mm. you know, the, the harm they might have had uh, on their patients. Yeah. So it's coming, you know, it's five to ten years to, to really flip over. I think a lot of dentists also know that, they, that it's a very interesting industry for um, for mental issues and um, things, isn't it? I mean, it, it's, it's well known. I mean, I hear many dentists yeah. say that actually, it's a lot of colleagues have had this, that, and the other. They don't necessarily connect the dots. Yeah, so they have higher rates of divorce, higher rates of alcoholism. The tremor thing is yeah. like yeah. all over the place. They have chronic mercury poisoning. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't really want to go down the mercury route too much more, but there's a question, and this is personal interest, I guess, because a lot of people ask me, and I think I know that Quicksilver and what you do is much bigger than just the detoxification in terms of mercury, but is a big part because yeah. a lot of us have actually got it from our mothers, our mother's mothers and whatnot and I believe that it stores in us because I see people that have never had mercury fillings don't eat fish and still have stupidly high levels of mercury. Um, so what I was going to say is, um, that's, I guess that's part one of that, but the second yeah. thing is what sort of symptoms or things do you generally see people with mercury toxicity have? Like how does it manifest? Yeah, yeah, there's... Uh there's neurological and systemic things, and uh, the neurological is, is mostly around anxiety. You're creating glutamate excesses in the brain, which is going to shift you into being more anxious. Uh, eventually, that's going to wind up uh, processes that flip into brain fog. 
And uh, that tends to cycle between anxiousness and depression. Mm -hmm. As the inflammation comes up, it becomes more depression. So mm -hmm. you'll have that cycling there that's very characteristic of mercury. Mm -hmm. And then the lower 48 uh, will have energy deficits mm -hmm. because of poisoning uh, on a cellular level to the mitochondria. The mitochondria are disproportionately damaged compared to the rest mm -hmm. of the cell. Mm -hmm. And so you're not making enough cellular energy. And then at a organ level, you've got thyroid and adrenals mm. that are very strongly affected uh, by mercury. The most, the easiest thing to find on like labs is T4, T3 conversion of thyroid. So uh, circulating T4 is released by the thyroid. It's converted to active T3, which turns up your metabolism. So if you measure free T4 and free T3, and uh, the free T4 is kind of on the higher end of the range and the T3 is on the lower end of the range, that's uh, mercury, cadmium, or arsenic. Yeah. Uh, and and so that's lowering energy and then yeah. its uh, effect on bringing down adrenal and, and it does also uh, affect the immune system towards higher re reactivity, yeah. higher uh, propensity towards, uh, towards uh, histamine yeah. activation. But one of the important things, very important things that happens towards creating these fatigue syndromes uh, is its activation of viruses. Mm -hmm. uh, mercury is always drawing down glutathione levels and adequate reduced glutathione is essential for having uh, the right innate immune response and the right Th1 response. And so a, when that's low and it brings interferon down, viruses thrive, especially herpes family viruses. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so chronic fatigue, Epstein-Barr virus, I think that's herpes 5, cytomegalovirus, herpes 7. If you look on your labs and you see maybe ALT, the liver enzyme is a little mm -hmm. high, but AST and GGT aren't, mm -hmm. that's uh, cytomegalovirus usually. See, you just described me right there. There yeah, you and, go. And those are high levels, yeah. Cytomegalovirus, it's all yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and so there you're going to want to do cat's claw, milk thistle, mm -hmm. and glutathione to bring that down. Uh, and it's interesting with the milk thistle because I was using that and I was finding that people's, you know, bringing people's viruses down, it was like much better uh, when you had, the cat's claw is a good antiviral, but if you had the milk thistle on board, it was always better. And I was like, well, you lower the toxins, your immune system works better. And then uh, this friend of mine, Judy Mikovits, who does research around vaccines, and she was one of the early researchers in HIV AIDS. She said the guys in the Dallas Buyers Club using those peptides to shift the immune system, it only worked when they were taking high doses of milk thistle. Wow. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. So, I mean, there's loads of information for me there personally, and I know for the, the guys watching as well. But, um, I mean, thank you very much for coming to London. I know it's a big trip out over the pond. Um, yeah. But, yeah. And thank you for being part of year one of what I hope, or we, what we hope would be an ongoing thing. From looking from the turnout, it's, it's as big as Upgrade Labs was over it in Beverly Hills. Yeah, so, you've yeah. got this going. Congratulations. Thank you very much for coming. Thank Thanks, you so Chris. much. Cheers.